What's up, y'all? We back with another one, man. Right here, we just chilling night, cooling, man. Watching AK. Man, we got Nicki Minaj exposes Jay Z over finessing her. Diddy got all his peers hiring lawyers and on the run. Get into this one right here, man. Obviously, I, I think you guys are definitely um, want to hear me talk about this Nicki Minaj thing. W by the way, I actually think, hey, I think once again. Here act goes. I take blame for this whole conversation happening. Well, not blame. I I'm taking credit. So really, I'm patting myself on the back. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking. I'm taking credit for this whole conversation happening between Nicki Minaj and Nicki Minaj flaming Jay Z. Right? I'm, I'm gonna tell you why. Th that whole thing started when I was breaking down the Super Bowl, and I'm the only one who broke down Jay Z's list of what I call hoodwink moments that he did for the culture. So I talked about, the, the, obviously, the NFL deal. I talked about how he co-opted everybody to support title like it was for us. I talked about how he did it with the Brooklyn Nets. I talked about a bunch of these things. And, um, yeah, uh, for whatever reason, I saw clips floating around. And it was one of my streams that was posted to TikTok that Nicki Minaj commented under my TikTok video of my stream and we reposted it and I didn't think Nikki first of all, I didn't think Nikki was gonna comment. Second of all, I didn't think Nikki was gonna keep standing on the point. And later on, you know, um she got criticized by Stephen A. Smith. She got criticized obviously recently by Steve Stout. And now she's lashing out and she's given much more details than we ever knew. So maybe I should start with that because that's kind of the hot topic, ain't it? Uh Nicki Minaj is lashing out of, against a few people. First of all, Desiree Perez. I'm going to tell you why she's lashing out against Desiree Perez. I'll Google these people while I'm talking about them. That You, you guys could be in the loop. Desiree Perez is the CEO of um, Rock Nation. She's notoriously you know, associated or known for being a former uh, informant that cooperated against a cartel. And um, apparently she was involved in either some drug smuggling. Basically, when she got caught, she, she told on the cartel, okay? However, she's been a really good business partner for Jay-Z, clearly helping him make a lot of power moves and eventually gave her the, the, the decision or the, 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 the role of being the CEO of Rock Nation. Now, Nicki Minaj has a really deep entrenched beef with Rock Nation, not only because of their defense or their, you know, supporting other women that she's always aligned against, she feels like Rock Nation is always doing underhanded things to try to hurt her career. Who's leading Rock Nation? Desiree Perez. So not only, you know, and I'll explain the whole thing later. She don't like Jay-Z, but she don't like Desiree Perez neither, okay? So she goes in on Jay-Z. She goes in on Desiree Perez. And then she goes in on Steve Stout. Now, shout out to my man, Steve Stout. If you don't know who Steve Stout is, currently he's the um, head guy, founder and CEO of United Masters, okay? Um, a few years ago, it might be over five, definitely over five, maybe close to ten. Um, Steve Stout. I'm not going to talk about his whole history in the music business, right? But I'll talk about just recently what he's popping for. Essentially, he started a company called Translation. So uh, he started a company called Translation. Um, notoriously, the company Translation was invested in heavily. So Steve Stout, Translation. Google invested a lot of money into it, I believe, like $72 million if I if I remember um, yeah, Google Invest. Let me see if I can find that. Uh, and then, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, $70 million came from Google. What that did was it powered um, Translation, which then launched what's called United Masters to compete to be what his goal is to... um a label on your, your cell phone. So essentially, obviously, if you guys know the longer history of Steve Stout, used to work in the music business. By the way, people like Steve Stout, people like Lyra Cohen, 
they saw the collapse or almost shrinking of or the downsizing of the music industry or the stagnation for a while, a lot of the smart guys went to tech or started to build tech companies that could be labels. United Masters is a tech company, but it's a label, quote, unquote, in your pocket because they're just using tech to operate like a label. Um, Lear Cohen, who was running 300 Entertainment, he goes to Google or really YouTube and he gives up, well, not gives up, but he stops doing label stuff with 300. Remember, he was running around with Thug. He goes to deal with the tech company of YouTube, but he's still pulling the strings on, you know, algorithms and this and third that affect music. He's actually the head of music over there. So, again, a lot of the smart guys who's been around in, you know, executive roles, for example, Steve Stout, ex for example, Lyra Cohen, they kind of still affected music, but they start going to tech route. That's important, um, and you'll see why in a few. Anyway, let's kind of give a little bit more context, right? Recently, in the last few weeks, Nicki Minaj spoke up about uh, Lil Wayne being snubbed from the uh, Super Bowl halftime show headliner gig, and she essentially blamed Jay-Z, saying that Jay-Z was not only 50-something, but still in woman business, and clearly he's making a, she was making a, uh, I could actually read those tweets, Nicki Minaj, um, tweets, Lil Wayne, yeah, she basically was, you know, she she essentially was saying, you know, uh, where's the tweets, she didn't say his name then, but she was basically saying, yo, you're in people's like you're 50 plus and you're in like woman business. This was at all of these were kind of like indirectly at um oh yeah, all of these were kind of indirectly at Jay-Z, right? Denying a young black man and what he's rightfully put into the game for no other reason but your ego. That's aimed at Birdman. Your hatred for Birdman and no no, it's not aimed at Birdman, it's aimed at Jay-Z. Your hatred for Birdman, Drake and Nikki got you punishing Wayne, Lil Wayne, the GOAT, da 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 da. Okay. Uh, okay, okay. And this was this was at Jay Z too. Um, one nigga took a knee, the other nigga took a bag. He gonna get you n words in line. Um, yeah. So yeah, essentially she was shooting at Jay Z a lot. She never said his name during that rant. However, after that, uh, Stephen A. Smith spoke out and criticized Nicki Minaj for attacking Jay Z, and some of what he said almost nine days ago was this. It's about my own individual emotion. I'm pretty pissed off. Jay-Z is my boy. Sorry. Make no mistake about it. That's my that's my dog right there. Um, if he were wrong. But what do Jay-Z dick in her career and her feeling upset in her opinion got to do with a sports analyzer? Like, Nigga, you what the fuck? Is you is you is you gonna fix their relationship? Is you gonna fill in them blanks for what they? You know what I'm saying? Like you ain't got shit to do with it. Like what the fuck? I wouldn't say much. If he's right, I'd have more to say. But under no circumstances am I gonna be quiet when you talking about him like that, Nicki Minaj. What the hell was that? What's that about? Respectfully, that's some bullshit. It really, really is. That's just beyond the pale. Master P's open letter, no harm, no foul. Lil Wayne's your man. You a New Orleans native. He's a now. It's important to know. And again, I know y'all yeah, hate when I cut it off, but I like to give context. Nicki Minaj is not a New Orleans native. Nicki Minaj is a New York native, brother man. That's what I'm saying. He he don't even know what he's talking about. He just talking because he. Fuck with Jay-Z, I guess. Like, my nigga don't even know what's going on. A nigga could owe you a million dollars and you could speak up for yourself, but the other nigga that fuck with the other nigga who owe you, he'll speak up for that nigga. But the nigga owe you a million dollars. Like, are you like, what the hell? Steven A one of them niggas. At least he ride for his people right or wrong, though. That's at least that's good at the end of the day, I guess. Um, Stephen A. Smith is just talking about Nikki shitting on Jay-Z indirectly, even though it was kinda obvious she was this and Jay-Z, 
what Stephen A. Smith is lacking is that Nicki Minaj and Jay-Z's history actually go way back. Like, there's some history there, and Nicki has felt slighted by Jay-Z. So Stephen A. Smith doesn't know that and just believes that Nicki's been super, being super hateful and ungrateful in a moment where hip-hop is getting a platform basically due to Jay-Z. New Orleans native. I get that part. You think he should have been there? I happen to know he was on the list. I happen to know he was given consideration. But Kendrick Lamar is arguably the hottest thing out right now. Not like us. That single, man. I mean, everybody going, everybody going off about that. By the way, Lim, thank you for being the first member of our King Academic Challenge. She was off the chain. We got to call it what it is. Now, it wasn't, it wasn't great for Drake. But Drake is still big time. He still got his followers. He still got people that love the hell out of him because he's been... See, that's the thing, though. The shit ain't even about Drake or Kendrick, though. It's like, Drake or Kendrick not even from New Orleans. It ain't even about that. Like, it ain't even got nothing to do with their beef either. Phenomenal. He's fantastic. Ain't nobody here. Nigga don't want Goddamn Drake to perform in New Orleans for Super Bowl. Nigga want Lil Wayne, motherfucker. Goddamn. Trying to throw no shade on Drake. But Kendrick Lamar right now is that dude. And why is that relevant? Because I want to put up this full screen for past performers. Okay. So, you know, and, and this is where, you know, if you're Stephen A. Smith, with all due respect to Stephen A. Smith, when it comes to rap, he's out of his league. If you're, if you're talking about whether me, Joe, or anybody else who really covers it all the time. Just like if we speak about sports, we're out of our league when it comes to his expertise, right? Because he's really tapped in. Again, he's isolating her comments to think that Nicki Minaj is only saying this because of Wayne in this moment. Nicki has felt this way about Jay-Z for a while. This was the icing on top of the cake for her to express the vitriol about Jay-Z. Also, that... Stephen A, big, big head ass don't know nothing, man. He just think that big lip ass nigga always right. That's the whole fucked up shit. That probably was one of the only days on social media that people were like, maybe Jay-Z is a hater. That's why she came out with it. Obviously, is she upset that, that Wayne didn't get the gig? Clearly, but that's not where the vitriol is coming from, right? Very important to know. Um, I, I, I just want to um, say that, and, and I'll play this last this last piece where she's talking where he's talking about her tweet, and then I'll get to I'll, I'll keep the story going. I respect you. I respect your work. I respect what you've accomplished. Who else you gonna get in the beef with? Little Kim, Mariah Carey, Cardi B, Gucci Mane. I'm just looking at all of this stuff. Taylor Swift. So he calls out Nicki Minaj for being almost like a, you know. Like a 6 9 figure. Oh, or like a 50 cent figure back in the day. Oh, you're just starting beef with everyone. You're the problem, right? Every time we turn around, Demi Lovato. Every time we turn around and something, Nikki. You disagree with the decision? You disagree with the decision? You got to talk about the brother like that? And why are we talking about Jay-Z like he's some damn sellout or something? Need I remind y'all? All the hip hop artists, all the R and B people that have been performing. Okay, perfect. All right, so th that's pretty much what he said about Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj um, did not take lightly to that. He res she responded afterwards. Nicki Minaj responds to Stephen A. Smith. He respond. She responded by saying, "Oh look, another paid Laffy Taffy alien." who only comes off his knees to turn around and back that ass up. Laughing my ass off. Steven, we don't care. I'm going to tell you right now, we don't care. If I say it, if I say more, it'll be your fault. Sit down, ugly. Now, it's kind of, I, I, I'll be honest, it's, that, that's an interesting um, point she's make, making, but I also got to call her, you know, we, we want to be factual here. What Nicki Minaj is alluding to is that Jay-Z, here's why, you know, there's two reasons why what's happening to Drake. And I know you're probably like, oh, first Drake mentioned, oh, stream the real. No, it's not. It's two reasons why what's happening to Drake could never happen to Jay-Z. First and foremost is the obvious. Jay-Z, you know, his cultural currency, he's kind of been a person who's dictated the culture 
never been ever accused of maybe not being from the culture or just not being a product of the culture. Like, Jay-Z is hip-hop, if you get what I mean, right? His life, his plight, his story is synonymous with, hip- with hip-hop. That's never been questioned, and, and we all know that. While with Drake, they'd be like, well, his mama is white. Oh, well, he's from Canada. Well, really, like, yo, like, well, it, it, is he, like, cosplaying as an Atlanta nigga? Like, there's been questions, right? It's, we're just speaking facts here. So that's the first reason that you can never do what, you know, kind of is happening to Drake now. And, you know, in that that's an angle that Kendrick really pretty much successfully, like, kind of put across. And a lot of people have bit into it, right? The second reason why you can never have done that to Jay-Z is that Jay-Z did what most successful people end up doing who go from the bottom to the top and stay at the top and then usually break through this. You know, us as black people, we talk about this, almost this, you know, yo, you can't get through this proverbial, you know, ceiling, right? Where they're like, no, no, they'll keep you down here, but they won't let you into the the real room, right? Like, I mean, Pac is alluded to. Like, this is always a talking point, right? Where it's like, yeah, you'll be the, the guy with the shiny chains, but you'll never really be one of them. Who's one of them? The owners who own all the shit. The people who own these record labels. The people who own these streaming services. The people who own these, you know, the these ticket and touring companies. Jay-Z has done that. But not only because of his, you know, no matter how much I've said that, you know, he's definitely sometimes co-opted culture. And sometimes, you know, just like, he, he, he he's a businessman. He's a f- Phenomenal businessman. No matter if if you claim he, you know, finesse the culture to rock with him or support his ventures, he's fi- he, he's his business moves usually work. But not only that is that Jay Z laid a trail of other people who he put in positions, and Nicki Minaj knows this, and the majority of the industry knows this. Jay Z has left people in positions along the way that don't you realize Jay-Z don't got to respond to nothing? If you critique Jay-Z, there's like 10 niggas that jump out the window that instantly start backing him up. And if you look at it, they're not just doing it just because of no reason. They usually have some type of financial incentive or some type of tie. They might be managed by Rock Nation. They might be an executive or have some type of venture with him outside here he might have gave them their first job as an a and r he might have gave them their first job as a you know a, a um a, a vp of a and r or a vp of this and in jay's wake of becoming who he is there's a ton of those people now it's within music but also outside of music because jay is not only doing business in music. Clearly, he's doing business with the NFL. Clearly, he's doing business with Square. Clearly, he's doing business with the spirits, um, like when it comes to like vodka and or used to or vodka and cognac and all that. He's a very influential guy. The guy actually had Rock Nation doing sports. The guy is so close. He's done everything. So what Nicki Minaj is alluding to here is that she's feeling, and by the way, we're going to get to Dame Dash making this accusation too. She's feeling that this interception that she's watching Stephen A. Smith do is the product of maybe some association that would benefit Stephen A. Smith. And I don't know about Stephen A. Smith, all of his ventures, his and third. I don't know if he has consistently said, Jay's my boy. Jay's my boy. And I don't know, I don't know Stephen A. Smith to just have for rents that have no business incentive. We should all know that. Shit, he worked with Skip Bayless for 15 years or whatever long it was, and then he said me and him were just partners. Like, he didn't say that's my friend. (laughs) So when he's saying that Jay-Z is his friend, (laughs) we have to imagine that there's more. So what Nicki Minaj is basically saying here is, oh, okay, this dude's only coming off his knees to turn around back to that ass up, basically saying, hey, we don't care. Well, she's copying, like, one of his sayings, right? And then saying, if I say more, it's going to be your fault. Basically saying, your defense of him is only going to keep 
encouraging me to keep going, right? So uh, um, Stephen A. says that, and um, Nikki re responds initially. Then the next thing happened. We're going to talk about Ryan Clark in a little bit, but Ryan Clark with the pivot. He did an interview with... Season already crazy, dog. Steve, Steve Stout. So Steve Stout did the Pivot podcast, okay? And he spoke on not only Jay-Z, he defended him, by the way. Spoiler alert. Spoke on Drake, spoke on the Super Bowl, and he spoke on Nicki Minaj. That's, you know, and by the way, I had to tell y'all all that to get y'all up to. The next thing after I play this, we'll get into Nicki Minaj's current date tweets. So let me find where he talks about the Super Bowl, Drake, Jay-Z, and then criticizes Nicki. Here we go. So look like they start off hot. Here we go. Uh, We're trying to get you, but now it's my turn. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I went through Jim Crow. Question. <laughs> I'm going to do 1. Yeah. 1.25. Kendrick is an unbelievable performer. It's not like you could knock Kendrick. I mean, I guess that's what some By the way, I also want to give, uh, I also want to, you know, I know some of y'all might not be familiar with some of these people. Steve Stout is an amazing music mind. Like, like this guy is up, up, off, being smart, lasting as an executive for all these years. He's really smart, okay? I, I do have to say that, right? Um... Now, obviously, like any man, like even me, like we, you can still be smart and have biases, right? But still, he's usually he's a, he's a really smart guy. Anyway. The hate that was spewing this week, you can't disrespect Kendrick because you chose Kendrick. Nigga, fuck Kendrick. What the fuck you mean? Now I'm playing. Hey, bro, you keep, niggas keep thinking, niggas, niggas keep thinking just, we not saying, look, I don't know what they saying, but me, I'm not saying, I don't want Kendrick to perform at the Super Bowl. And I don't want Drake to perform at the Super Bowl. Nigga, I want Lil Wayne to perform in New Orleans at the Super Bowl. Like, what the fuck? And naturally, Wayne is hurt. I've sat there with Jay-Z, the, the Grammys, that's nominated for eight awards and walks away with none. It doesn't feel good. Nobody at that level of success wants to be let down or be told you're not chosen tonight but the way little wayne handled it he's talked about it. he says man i was hurt he admitted it that's the natural feeling but then people coming off the top buckle you know just starting to say shit like jay's a bad person and he has distaste for this person and that person and you know the the, the comments that were being said and that nikki spared it was I just think it was wrong and way out of line that she would be that personal with him, given all the doors and opportunities that he's given us all, uh, and specifically her. But the Wayne angle would be, like even R.C. said, he's, he's a New Orleans dude. It's Wayne, it's New Orleans, it's the city, it's... Okay, this is not about Wayne today, so we're going to skip past some of the rain, Wayne rhetoric. We want to hear about Jay-Z, Nicki, Drake, okay? The... This, this may be some old performance from, I mean... Let's be honest, man. Don't you think for one second we may be slightly spoiled? Jay got into the Super Bowl, halftime performances. You think these hip-hop acts would be getting picked at all if it wasn't for him? But wh why are we not celebrating that? Why are we criticizing the decision when he picked? Thank you for the timestamp, by the way. Thank you. Uh, who's that? Uh, A2221. Somebody give that brother a sub. That brother starving. Give that, give that brother a sub. Thank you for the timestamp. Give that brother a sub, man. Dr. Dre and Snoop and, and Eminem and 50 and Mary and, and did that or put Kendrick on the big stage. Why are we not celebrating that idea? I don't, that's the part that's confusing to me. I love that you brought that up. Isn't that the Super Bowl halftime performance that created the expectation that Lil Wayne would perform in this Super Bowl? Because when you mentioned Dre, it was Dre, it was Snoop, and then from okay, and when we saw that, I Death Row, so that I place it. Here Usher in Vegas, right? I mean, as far as I'm concerned, man, the fact that these artists are Here getting their flowers and they're getting their chance to perform on this stage, these black artists, hip hop and R&B artists, if it wasn't for him, this wouldn't be happening. Yeah. So how could you come down and criticize this man like that it, to me, it's because we can, bro. We the ones that buy the music, you dumbass. We the ones that go tune in and get the ratings, nigga. 
We the ones that's gonna pay for the tickets to come see this shit. What do you mean, bro? You sound stupid. What if nobody show up? What if nobody cut on the TV? What the fuck you talking about? <laughs> like, I know you a little billionaire, a little big head ass, bald head ass motherfucker, and you rich and you good at what you do, but nigga, we care cause we the ones that gotta look at you, asshole. Like, damn it, man. It's beyond me. Shit. I just don't get that logic. Would have brought Lil Wayne out at some point, right? He probably would have brought out Nicki, which is probably why she's upset, because she's not on stage. But Drake turned it down twice, so it is like this: the NFL. I know Steve Stout chat. You see, <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna find out a little bit more. Actually, I could just ask Drake, but I hate asking Drake because every time I ask Drake a question, somebody asks me like, "Yo, act." You know, like flipping on Drake. I'm like, first of all, like this is no sides, but still, like, no, no. Anytime I say Drake tells me something, y'all think Drake voluntarily made a statement. Like the nigga will answer whatever question I have. So like, I'm now fine. I'm now realizing, you know what? If bro, I I stream every day, bro. He doesn't talk every day. So like, maybe I should just use other people as sources. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask Steve Stout. He won't tell me the truth. Because if I ask Drake, he'll tell me, and then y'all be like, yo. I seen Ebro say it was like, why is Drake commenting about a Super Bowl? Because somebody asked him. You get what I'm saying? Well, somebody spoke to no. He turned it down twice, which is fine. He didn't want to do it. But nobody's going to say, damn, why'd you turn it down? You could have got a little weight on. Mm -hmm. Right? Nobody. Well, this is also a little bit disingenuous, too, right? Like, uh, you know, I, I heard Wayne talk about possibly, and I could play that clip. Again, you know, we've kind of exhausted the whole Wayne Super Bowl angle. Wayne clearly stated, he said, hey, if I did get the Super Bowl, I probably wouldn't even fuck a guest. Like, this is my moment. Like, I'll probably rap their version, their, their verses and whatever on whatever song I'm going to perform. So it's clear that Wayne wants to headline a Super Bowl, not just be brought out like, oh, hey, come out and perform a milli, then go back into purgatory, right? He wants that moment, right? And I think he does deserve it, right? Like, this is one of the greatest artists of all time. He does deserve the headline and moment. So that kind of negates a little bit of what um, Steve Stout is saying because Drake headline and then bringing out Wayne it is not Wayne's moment, right? Nobody's going to connect that dot. The other thing is that no one seems to think about is why is it Jay-Z picking himself? Like, he's not even being selfish about it for himself. By the way, uh, somebody told me uh, I'll be out, uh, I'll be out in the uh, building. Yo, shout out to I'll be out if you're in the building, brother. He didn't want to do it, but nobody's gonna say, "Damn, why'd you turn it down? You could have got little weight on." Mm -hmm. Right? Nobody's gonna connect that dot. The other thing is that no one seems to think about is why is it Jay Z picking himself? Like he's not even being selfish about it for himself. Now, now I'll answer that. I mean. The culture supported him being in that position to get the move. Like, you know, th this this idea that Jay Z is is almost like like the rich king that's just saying, "Here, you peasants, let me give to you." No, Jay Z used cultural support to get to the room to get this deal. If Jay Z was seen as I don't know. Name a black entertainer. People don't like that. If, like, for example, if Jay Z was me, like, obviously I'm not as great as Jay Z, but like, if if Jay Z was Fifty Cent, he wouldn't get to that room. He's Jay Z wasn't as polarizing as Fifty Cent. Fifty wouldn't get to that room because when Fifty says something, the entire culture doesn't go with it, especially at that time. Jay Z had the support of the culture, so to act like Jay Z is just you know, just, oh, my God, he's just so great. He's giving back. Nigga, no. It's like, it's like you know when they say you're voting for a black candidate? Yeah, we're voting for the black candidate to do shit for black people. Like, yeah, we're, we gave you the cultural currency for you to get in there to pick the rappers. Yeah, like, what the fuck? Like, this is not no, you're not gifting us some shit. You don't get there without everybody saying, oh, no, we rock with Jay. Why isn't somebody saying, man, you know what? He's actually making a decision based off of what he thinks the best performance is at the right time, music, et cetera, because he's not even using this moment for, to, to, to satisfy himself. He has catalog. He can rock. Yeah. He's nice. 
he's not even choosing himself. To me, that should be celebrated, that he's not being selfish and he's helping these artists and giving them what they deserve and not being selfish about it and choosing only, you know, Rock Nation acts or himself. Because if, if it was just that, I could understand. Well, Rihanna, uh, and by the way, th th this isn't a good point, but I'm making it anyway. Rihanna did perform, like, she, she was popped, she popped up, like, you know what I mean? Anyway, but but still, yeah, I do think, I don't think he's really prioritizing Rock Nation artists. And I mean, honestly, let's think about who's on Rock Nation. The only people who would be able to perform that would deserve that stage would have to be Rihanna. Is, is J. Cole still on Rock Nation, I guess, right? Yeah. J. Cole couldn't headline. Like, with all due respect to J. Cole, you're not a headliner of the Super Bowl, right? But, like, yeah, I can see you popping out. Right. Um. Uh. So Rihanna, Jay Z, and Beyonce. Right. Which are all Rock Nation. Right. And then we have J Cole. Who Who else? Who else is on? Um. Who else is on Rock Nation? Anybody else? Like, bro. If I see Meg Thee Stallion popping out, yo, Meg Thee Stallion's supposed to be twerking at Kamala Harris rally. She's not supposed to be performing at the fucking Super Bowl. Get the fuck on out of here. Right. Like. Like. I, I, I like I can't imagine who else on Rock Nation could even be in a discussion. Now here's the thing, like you could be biased to your people, but you can't just you know just like put something that don't make sense. Somebody said Kanye. Kanye is not on Rock Nation. Little Uzi Vert. I'm gonna be honest with you, <laughs> yo, like, I, yo, we love Uzi, but Uzi at the Super Bowl is not a thing, bro. Okay, <laughs> I love y'all, and 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 I'm not saying. Maybe at some point he won't. But if you announce that Uzi's headline the Super Bowl, <laughs> come on, come on. Keep in mind, you have to realize the Super Bowl is is the singular biggest American sporting event where it's going to have the most eyeballs. The average consumer that advertisers are trying to appeal to, they're in their 40s. Lil Uzi Vert appeals to 16-year-olds. I'm, I'm not saying all 16-year-olds. Shit, I'm in my 30s. So I fuck with his music, but... His music doesn't go to 40-year-old white men. You know what I'm saying? saying so they're not picking him, right? They got to pick an artist that's big enough that 40-year-old white men would know their fucking music. That's just really what it is. And then when you think about Beyonce, yeah, they, they'll know single ladies. They'll know Patio Weave and all that bullshit. You know, it, it, you pick Drake, they'll know, I need a one dance. They'll know Hotline Bling or some shit like that. Beyonce, oh, well, I said Beyonce already. They, they'll know um, Ariana. Work, work, work. Like, th they'll know a couple songs. You get what I'm saying? Like, but you pick Lil Uzi Vert. What do you think Lil Uzi Vert is going to be like? Uh, 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 uh. Like, bro, come on, bro. Like, <laughs> stop it, bro. That's good on Kai that stream, not the Super Bowl. With all due respect, I love Kai. Come on, bro. Hold on. Ain't it? But for it to come down like this is just, to me, shit is corny. And it makes, it makes the hip-hop community, the black community. With all due respect. Exo Tour Life isn't known by one damn four-year-old white man. And again, we, we got to think about NFL demographics. We're not thinking about... Uzi could headline every... Super Bowl, do not try to appeal to rolling loud crowds, bro. They're appealing to the white man who's in their 40s with two kids, one... 112 and one like six and they just spent like think about the super bowl yo tickets are like fifteen thousand, and and we're not talking about like box tickets like make it just a regular seats in the 200 tickets you know what i'm saying kanye could perform clearly but kanye's not rock nation you know what i'm saying but like with all due respect like loudly and i was by the way i agree with y'all with all due respect to kendrick lamar drake anybody else the only living artist that would do the best performance at the Super Bowl is Kanye goddamn West. Was it Kanye, Mari West, whatever the fuck his middle name is? Like, come on, like, bro, come on. Bro, like, first of all, with all due respect, I, I think Kendrick's gonna kill it. But Kanye would make Kendrick look like a baby. Like, Kanye and Kendrick artistically are on the same level, in my opinion. Like, Kanye, to me, is the greatest hip-hop artist of all time. Kanye, it, like... To me, come but, on. And I want to know, like, no, no, no. Be honest, though, bro. Like, how is Kendrick the best rapper to people, bro? Like, he don't even put out music, bro. I don't get it. What do people see in that shit? 
just don't understand, bro. Why? Like, how? Like, this shit trash. The only rapper album that's gonna be good, that's gonna do good from fucking with Kendrick in that situation is, uh, Future. You see YG shit flop, everybody shit flop. Future the only nigga that can hold his own. His numbers on his numbers about to come in next week, man. I hope Future don't flop, dog. Damn. Just hit for hit. Kanye just Kanye devours Kendrick. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, like, let, let, let's be clear. Like, you know, again, I haven't been to, you know, I've been to a few Kendrick shows, not, not everyone. But, bro, Kanye was trying to, Kanye was doing hovering states. He was trying to do a lot. I don't know if we could say Kendrick's performance is a better than Kanye. The thing is, Kanye's going to get at the Super Bowl and say some crazy shit. That's, not, <laughs> that's why they're not going to fuck with him, right? You know what I mean? Anyway. Now he's talking about Jay Z and Dame Dash. We're gonna play Dame, Dame Dash's thoughts afterwards. So, he's talking about it, you know, top of my lungs, screaming it. Avoid record companies, be independent, own your shit. It has value. To me, the loudest example of that, that's in plain daylight, is this. Now you got Jay Z, right? One of the biggest artists ever, and his first album, his former partner owns one third of it. That's Dame. And there's value to it. He's trying to sell it. He's trying to do NFTs with it a couple years ago. So for all artists looking at this, you see how that master is the equivalent of real estate or any other asset that's everlasting. So it's an education that if you own something and master recording, it has the same kind of value so he's piggybacking off the Jay-Z and Dame Dash story. I think this is probably a promo for United Masters. United Masters, their whole thing is, we don't want to own your masters. We want to be distribution, and we'll offer other services that we'll do for a set price or maybe a slight percentage, right? That's, that, that's their thing. But, you know, um, when you sign to a major label, historically, like, for example, it's – it, it, like, I will bet my life savings, Drake does not own Take Care Masters. Nobody, like, nobody signs a, a, a record deal where you own the Masters, unless you have severe leverage, you have crazy leverage now. You get what I'm saying? But Drake signed in, in 2008 or whatever. It's fucked up, okay? Now, what's probably happened is that he's... You know, he's probably worked, you know, with every renegotiation. He's like, yo, will I only own 10%? I want 30% or I want the 20%. Like, you know, you, you kind of work it off. That's how Universal keeps you from going independent. Like, well, you know, we got the the early parts of your catalog. If you sign another deal, we'll give you 20% more. Of it. That's how they kind of do it, right? Anyway, so, so, he, so he's talking about um, – it's kind of like a, a United Masters promo. Hold on. That you would have if you bought a house that appreciated. Okay. Right. Ownership of this. Uh, do you have friends that you grew up with, man? And okay, so he's talking about on Dame the Dame Dash. side. Okay, here we go. Do you have friends that you grew up with, man? And as you pivoted and as you grew, they couldn't jump the fence anymore. They couldn't jump the next fence. They couldn't go. Right. And it don't look good. It ends bad. This ends really bad. The man's. You know, it's embarrassing, actually. It goes from a point where, like, you know, whatever, ha, 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 rap beef, you didn't make it, you're not that guy, to, like, your teeth is falling out. Yeah. I mean, seriously, your teeth are falling out. You're lying through your teeth, your teeth are falling out. You're trying to create and muster animosity with anybody to create some momentum around some bullshit. You're trying to sell a master and sell a chain with it, like people are children. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, he's shitting on Dame right now. I want to get the chain for $10 million. Like, are you serious, dog? And then you're running around giving people financial advice like you're the OG. You're not the OG. 
It's about. Don't do this. I'm broke because all I do is invest in myself. And no, you're broke because you made bad investments in yourself. <laughs> Come on. But he put a bunch of stuff out there, bro. And then even we all. Damn. Oh, watch it. We all hip hop dudes. Yeah. What the stuff that Dame says about you that you just have to clear up? Because he said he slapped you over eighteen thousand dollars. He said, he, no. I, like it's, I, I, I could get a list of stuff that I done heard no, no, about. No, 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 no. Not only, I, Dame of eighteen thousand dollars. Dame and I had an altercation, right? Whoa. We had two altercations. We we're in an office at Sony. Many, not at Sony, at his record. At uh, we were in the same building. It was like ten guys in the room. I was by myself. And we got into an altercation, no doubt. Yelling, fighting, whatever. About two years later, I seen him. We were on the same street, and it was him by himself. He had two girls with him. Uh, I went to step to him. This man pushed the girl in front of me. What? And took off running. <laughs> oh, okay, now I get why David asked his father, okay. Yeah, he's violated. What has Dame ever said about him? I forgot. Dame Dash Steve Stout. I don't remember that. Wow. Dame Dash. The girl he pushed in front of me falls. An hour and four minutes? And then okay, sues gotcha. me. Thank you. The insurance company pays out her just to not even ha have lawyers. They just write, just to prove it, Steve. They don't even tell me. They just settle. Whatever it is they settle is. $30,000 or some bullshit for nothing. But, I mean, he pushed the girl, the girl faking the fall on the floor, my ankle, all the bullshit. But five hours after that, we're at Kanye's party, and the girl walks up to me and tells me, you don't remember me? I'm like, no. A girl walks up to me and tells me, you don't remember me? I'm like, no. She says, I was the girl who sued you. OG capping, bruh. OG. Uh, you remember me? I'm, man, OG capping, bruh. That you get, gave us, we used to settle out in LA, to move out to LA. Thank you. Wow. That's his woman now. So we've always had a. Girl. Oh my god. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. This is gonna be some beef. Yeah, this is gonna be some beef right here. Oh no. Yeah, niggas start talking about your woman. Yeah, it's on. I don't want no parts of this. This is old nigga beef. I want these niggas gonna start hitting each other with a cane. <laughs> like, I want no parts. Okay? I want no parts. Okay thing with each other what we want me to say man it's he's he's in bad shape he's been in bad shape for a long time he's hold not on, on. tough i'm not saying i'm tough i certainly would and it was him by himself he had two girls with him uh i went to step to him yeah, i'm gonna be honest with you old nigga beef especially with these niggas yo bro these niggas get, get up, up and gotta hit the icy hot on the fucking joints. You feel me? Yo, I'm glad. Yo, you know, you know, you know what I've been the most glad about recently, chat. Remember, not 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 2024. Either 2023 or 2022. Remember, I was beefing like crazy, like big act. I had to really, yo, these days, bro. The only niggas dissing me, they cloud chasing. Like I really got no real ops at this point. Like. I'm just chilling back. Like, niggas know don't play with me. Like, which, by the way, I'm going to always tell y'all, sometimes you really got to, you got to set an example. That's what I was saying about Jay Critch. You got to set an example that niggas stop playing with you. Because these days, bro, everybody getting a beef but me. Like, yeah, you got to have a little trash niggas dissing me. But, like, bro, like, I'm, like, too, too up to, to respond to them. I love watching everybody else beef. I'm watching Elliot beef with a bunch of niggas. 
Vlad is beefing. Yo, no, uh, um, Adam beefing with like his former employees. Yo, I'm just like chilling now. I'm like, I'm cooling. I don't got no more ops. Perfect. <laughs> this man pushed the girl in front of me and took off running. The girl he pushed in front of me falls and then sues me. The insurance company pays out her just to not even ha have lawyers. They just write, just approve it, Steve. They don't even tell me. They just settle whatever it is they settle is. $30,000 or some bullshit for nothing. But, I mean, he pushed the girl. The girl faking the fall on the floor. My ankle, all the bullshit. About five hours after that, we're at Kanye's party. And the girl walks up to me and tells me, you don't remember me? I'm like, no. A girl walks up to me and tells me, you don't remember me? I'm like, no. She says, I was the girl who sued you. Damn. The money that you get, gave us, we used to settle out in L.A., to move out to L.A. Thank you. Wow. That's his woman now. Oh, my God. So Yo, Dane, you can't let... Yo, it's Steve, my nigga. I fuck with Steve. I never really talk to Dane like that, but I do fuck with him. Yo, yo, Dane, you can't let Steve violate your current girl like this, bro. You like 40, 50 something. It's your queen. You just had a baby with her. You got. Yo, you got Steve Stout talking crazy about your queen, Dane? Chad, this is my new role. This incident, other niggas get heat. We've always had a thing with each other. What do we want me to say, man? It's, he's, he's in bad shape. He's been in bad shape for a long time. He's not tough. I'm not saying I'm tough. I certainly was My not running David. and doing I fucking jumping jacks to get the cops to stop and then have some girl sue me. I didn't do no bullshit like that, yeah. you know? But that's him, man. That's 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 him. Uh, well, you mentioned United Masters. Yeah. Uh, I saw something where a kid from Kid and Play said he introduced you to the music world. He said that you were a shark. You was made for this business. You were a shark. He was a dolphin. For me... Okay, all right, cool. We got through the Dane part. Uh but when I went to the advertising business, it wasn't popular. Like, you left the record business to go into advertising business. Everybody wants to be in the advertising business now. Huh. Everybody. Profitable. Yeah. Hey, you, you, want, what, you want a cookie? What the fuck? A podcast. Yep. You an influencer. You want to... Whatever you want to do, you want to be in the advertising business. Oh, you was the first one OG. Go ahead, spit your shit. Nope. You want money from advertisers. True. Got it. You want to monetize attention? Go to the advertising business. Guess what I do? Run the fucking advertising business. I started that 20 years ago. Yeah. You ain't know it would be where it is now. Yeah, you, you ain't know. Yeah, you did. You didn't know social media would be here 20 years. No, I didn't know social media was going to be as big. But what I did know, man, what I did know is that people were going to be able to monetize their influence. I actually said something like six years ago that everybody is going to be mini media channels. Like, you're not as big as ES. What does ESPN do? They create a channel, they put NFL and this stuff on it, and then they sell advertising against it. Yep. You're just a smaller version of that. That's all. And everybody, and now everybody's going to be mini media channels. You see what you're doing. You see what Cam and Mace are doing. What Wallow and Gilly, and Gilly are doing. This, that, and the third. You guys are all media channels. Yeah, true. Right? You're going to start disrupting. By, you know, we don't want to spend money, a finite amount of attention. Songs at 1.8 billion streams. He just put it out in February. And this is because we built the platform. That's global. That's what's next for me, man. And just in general, we've covered a lot of topics. The Super Bowl thing, I want to get back to that for a second, man. Okay, here we go. I'm not here to defend anybody. I really don't like when people who open up doors as black people okay. get shitted on publicly like that. I, I, I just don't like it. I think in that case, what Nikki did was wrong. Mm, okay. To bring up Title, his streaming company, that he gave you equity in, 
that you, you know, didn't sign the fucking paperwork, and that's the reason why you left millions of dollars on the table? That man didn't do nothing to you to be talking about somebody who's putting, whether it be Kendrick or Wayne or Drake or Usher, he's putting them on the biggest stage. That's what we should be applauding. That's growth. But the crabs in the barrel thing, oh, not him, fuck him, da-da-da-da-da. We can't do that. That's black-on-black -black crime. I don't like that. No. And maybe that's what it is. I think Nikki's great. I'm great, great artist. Very successful career. Don't do that. Just like, let's not do, do that in private. This, this social media thing where you start shooting at people like that, like, and not like a jab. I'm talking about like, fuck him and this and ty that's, 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 that's a little too much. I just think that's a little too much. Yeah, I will say this, um, and I'm in no means famous at all. I have gotten to be around Jay-Z a few times recently, and he's been nothing but kind and, and gracious and humble. I don't know his business inner workings. Yeah. I don't know how and what his relationships are with other people, but as far as the way that he's treated me, somebody who I know for sure can do nothing for him in any way, I think to me that's the measure of how I see him. I see him as a dude who's accomplished these great things. And I think the same way like athletes expect that Michael Jordan is gonna look when you meet him, that he's yeah. gonna walk around with this certain glow. To me, when I saw Jay-Z, like that's how he was. At the white party, it was, no, you're bougie, you were back there too. Like at the white party, nobody needs a rope at the white party. Everybody there but me, and Alicia were famous. And Steve, 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 Steve had a rope. Steve had a rope. Steve, Steve, and, Steve, and Jay, <laughs> Steve and Jay had a rope, right? And so I'm walking past. I speak to Steve. I was there dab him off. And so I walk around, and I swear, Jay-Z got up, and he wasn't walking. Like, he got over close to me, and he never put his feet on the ground, and his legs didn't move. <laughs> like, let's... It's what we call dick riding. Basically, what he's saying, when he seen Jay-Z, he was so starstruck, Jay-Z was floating like God. Like, nah, bruh. This nigga dick eating to the maximum. Throat full. That boy full of that shit all in his tummy going crazy. Damn. That's what we call dick right, eh? That's one point in the south. Nah, that was next level dick riding. I ain't from a grown man in his 40s plus on Jay-Z. Nigga, you old enough to be Jay-Z little big brother, nigga. Like, like that nigga said when he seen Jay-Z, he didn't even see his feet touch the ground. He was just floating. <laughs> he a pussy, bro. <laughs> his mama should be ashamed of him. So you, you saw Jay-Z, and he was moving, but he was not too excited. Like, dude look crazy. I just know he be getting fucked at the Diddy party. Like, look at him, bro. Like, that nigga turning red, and he dark-skinned. Like, And that's the story you're going with. Okay. I just want to ver verify this is penis saddling. This is the rodeo, a cock saddling extravaganza so you seen jay-z walk around but his his, his foot, foot never moved okay that's one point there legitimately because it's the first time i'd ever seen him in person he just <laughs> floated over like the golden child. yeah he just floated over <laughs> and he didn't even say nothing to me he just hit me one oh type of tricks he hitting splits i'm talking about back flips into a split tuck back tuck Super spin, he going crazy. The nigga who's built like a camel, big ass lips, one of them Amistad noses, hoofs. 
He said, Jay-Z built like a camel. Nah, bro. I'm like, who he talking about? <laughs> he wasn't walking. He was floating. Okay. You got it. One of these, and I left. I was like, oh, wait. My night is over. But at the, at, honestly, I had to get in the talk to him, though, and having a conversation. I ain't gonna lie. And, 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 and still, shout out to my man, uh, um, Ryan Clark. But Ryan Clark, you were smitten, my nigga. This is the type of impression that most people had of Diddy till Diddy fucked him. Real talk. Like, this is the type of... There's mad niggas who had that. Like, oh my God, I seen Diddy. Always he was just in like a mink. <laughs> he wasn't even walking. He was floating. He wasn't floating. He was skating on baby oil, nigga. Okay? Then he piped you out in the bathroom with Stevie J, allegedly. And then had Cassie watch you. Come on, stop playing. What you mean these niggas ain't walking? These are humans! These are humans! This is how you get fucked! What do you mean Jay-Z don't walk? Oh, I seen, I seen Puffy. He was on a slip and slide. He just slid on his belly. Yes, nigga. It was all baby oil, you fucking idiot. I just want to point out, anybody who said they saw Prince and Prince was floating, I thought they were gay. That's facts. Oh, you, oh, you saw Prince, he was floating? Oh, no, you just smitten. Okay, you, you, you. Prince walks like a human being. What do you mean you've seen Jay-Z, but you've never seen his foot move? What the fuck does that mean? What the hell? The white party, nobody needs a rope at the white party. Everybody there but me and Alicia were famous. And Steve, a rope Steve, Steve, Steve had a rope. Steve had a rope Steve, circling Steve and, around you. Steve and Jay. <laughs> you know what the craziest thing is? I be looking this shit up sometimes. My nigga Ryan Clark made $23 million in the NFL. It's no way he's this naive. Like, Ryan Clark is talking like a groupie on Instagram. This shit is crazy. What you mean you see these niggas and they're floating? Bruv, like, yo, what the fuck? What the fuck, nigga? You, wasn't he like a, what position he played? He, he played like, like defense or some shit? Nigga, you were like, Playing safety or some shit or cornerback when Peyton Manning was playing. What you mean? Did you think them players was floating too? Or what the fuck going on? Steve and Jay had a rope, right? And so I'm walking past. I speak to Steve. I was there dapping him off. And so I walk around, and I swear, Jay-Z got up, and he wasn't walking. Like, he got over close to me, and he never put his feet on the ground. And his legs didn't move, like, legitimately. Because it was the first. Yo, with all due respect, all I'm hearing from Ryan Clark is saying that night, Jay could have fucked him if he wanted. What you mean a nigga ain't walk? Bruv, you got to understand what you're saying to the regular public, my nigga. Yo, this is the only thing I don't like when athletes do podcasts. They be at, yo, you know when all y'all athletes do podcasts, whether it's you, Jeff Teague, Gilbert Arenas, before we listen to y'all opinion, we Google how much money you make. So we know you're not a normal nigga. We don't think you're just some random nigga walking off the street. We're looking at you as a nigga that's up eight figures. And you think Jay-Z's floating? Oh, Jay-Z could have put his dick in your butt. I'm sorry. Could have put his dick. I'm sorry. Like, what's, like, bro. Bro, come on, bro. First time I'd ever seen him in person. He just floated <laughs> over. Like the golden child. Yeah, he just floated over. And he didn't even say nothing to me. He just hit me with one of the. And I left. I was like, oh, wait, my night is over. But at the shit, if that nigga had got a this is whole text, come back to the penthouse, that nigga would have been a new man. He said, Jay Z did one of these. And he said, my night is good. I'm out. <laughs> what? Yo, chat, I'm going to keep it a bean with you, and, and, and I'm not trying to play with, like, I fuck with Ryan Clark, real talk. I'm, I'm not trying to, like, violate him, that type of shit. But, chat, what he talking about is why all y'all favorite rappers get fucked by these niggas, bro. Like, come on, bro, like, 
Bro, if you get this star struck money, like you up twenty million dollars, and you saying a nigga foot not touching the ground, he floating, he doing all type of hieroglyphics, he looking like Jesus, nigga, bro. What he describing, we've only ever seen in the Bible. <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna lie, I seen Jesus. They had two nails in his arm. They had like some shit on his hand. It looked like a crown. Like they had this nigga. Yeah, he looked dead as fuck. They put him in a tomb, and three days later. He popped out like, what up, G? I'm chilling. Yeah, th that's how y'all sound. Y'all describing this nigga like he's not human. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I was kicking with Jesus one time like, yo, like, first thing I pulled up on Jesus, I said, Jesus, where the hoes at? He said, I don't know, but let's find him. Yeah, we pulled up on some spot. I ain't gonna lie to keep it up being. It was like, it was like about 3,000 niggas, but it was about 500 bitches to keep it up being. Here's the thing. The host was about to leave, but then we look at my man Jesus and say, yo, bro, we only got like five loaves of bread and like three fishes. You can feed everybody. He fed every. Bro, stop it, nigga. Jay-Z's a fucking human being, nigga. The nigga look like a camel with big ass lips. He walks like a fucking human with big ass hoofs. Stop it. Stop the dick riding. This why you niggas get fucked. He wildin'! No, AK wildin'. No, he wildin'. What the fuck? Told my all this, oh yeah, I seen a nigga float. What the fuck is you talking about? Jay-Z ain't floating! Y'all better chill you up. He too mad. <laughs> <laughs> there be an allegation about me in the morning, like, holy shit. The fuck is niggas talking about you see that nigga flow? Y'all describing this nigga like he's Jesus. Fuck. This nigga laughing at this goofy ass story. He know his cap. Like, nigga, I gotta be high to here. You said you seen you seen this big lip, top heavy nigga fucking float? The nigga who lost. Nah, Jay, Jay Z is a little heavy set to think about it though, too. Plus 92 bricks to start floating. Nigga, stop it, nigga. Just say you wanted to suck his dick. Energy, if I ever say I meet Drake and Drake floating, say, act, you gay as shit. <laughs> Please, just, just tell me. It's okay. I, I'll accept that. If I ever say, oh no, I saw Drake and oh my God, he just started levitating. What? These are humans. <laughs> you telling me, Ryan Clark? No disrespect. You know, I, I don't know. Well, he probably don't even know who I am. It's all good. But Ryan Clark, you telling me that the nigga? I just want to be very clear. Jay Z, hold on. Nah, this shit really got AK fucked up. <laughs> I just. I just want Ryan Clark to clarify. You tell me that this nigga right here was levitating, gang. Bro, stop the malarkey. I was born at night, not last night, nigga. So this nigga was levitating. He, his foot never touched the ground. He's Aquaman. This nigga's Thor. <laughs> Y'all niggas got to cut it out, bro. Y'all got to cut it out. Y'all got to cut it out. Uh, yeah, honestly, after getting to talk to him, though, and having a conversation with him and just seeing how aware he is, yeah. um, how his focus is always going forward, but he does have the time. Yo, Chad, I'm going to keep it a beat with you. This is how they fuck you in the industry. If you meet a nigga and you think he not walking on ground, you thinking, like, he's a deity, he's a god, of course he could put his fucking dick in your booty hole, nigga. Of course, of course he could have you bobbing your fucking head, sucking his cock. Not saying necessarily Ryan Clark, but what I'm saying is, y'all see why did he fuck so many of your favorite rappers? Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. I know his PR has been going crazy recently. Allegedly, but still. <laughs> Niggas is saying they seen regular humans and they're floating. <laughs> we asked him to speak to Quincy Wood, uh, Wilson who had won a 400 gold medal. He was 16 years old at Fanatics Fest. Took, took his time, spent with that young man, had a conversation with him. So for me...
podcast sponsored by Fanatics. I want to hear his story about when he met Michael Rubin. This thing might be like, oh, I've seen white Jesus just descend from heaven. He came down in a white cloth and he said, from this day forward, we will have white parties on the 4th of July. There will be endless amount of liquor. There will be endless amount. Come on, bro. What are you talking about? These are fucking humans. Cut it the fuck out, nigga. Bro, if you made $30 million in the, in the NFL, like, I could, you, you, you know I can't understand with these athletes? Bro, if y'all made money in the NFL, did y'all go broke? Like, why y'all seeming like hoes? <laughs> y'all supposed to be like, nigga, I was under the spotlight being a, a star in the NFL. I made money. I'm not broke. I'm not going to be a groupie. A nigga who I bring from the bus station, if he sees Jay-Z, he's going to be, like, hypnotized by whatever aura he thinks he sees and thinks you'll let Jay-Z fuck him. But Ryan Clark, you, you made $30 million. Nigga, what the fuck is you talking about? You've seen a nigga lev- levitate. Is Ryan Clark good? I don't know about all the other so stuff. Is, I obviously man. want That's Wayne. Is, man. I obviously want Wayne to have everything I feel like he's earned oh, and deserved. Wayne, Wayne I'm also is, a Kendrick yeah. fan, though, so I understand. Yeah. By the way, Wayne is outstanding. Yeah. Did he tell the Nikki story or did I just go on tangent? Uh, Wayne is outstanding. And, again... Wayne said, oh, not, not Wayne knows this, Wayne's hurt. I understand that. He wanted that badly. Absolutely makes perfect sense. Wayne doesn't think that he didn't give it to him because he hates him. Right. This man paid, but it's when other people start commenting on that. Steve, without saying too much, Without saying too much, which happened. And bring it up. That's what, and that's the part that I'm saying because the beauty in it was that Wayne, Jay helped Wayne. And Wayne publicly acknowledged that and they're fucking cool. That's the beauty in the relationship, right? Despite the fact that this, this thing didn't go the way he wanted it to go. But when other people come in from the outside, others start commenting on it. And it makes it more like, fuck you, you hate him, your hatred for him. That part right there, that's not even true. That's not even true as evidenced by other actions. Nah, man, well, we appreciate you. I think. Evidence by, fuck? right. But when other people. Where's the title the part? I, think, I said it was the title part. So, me, I went to my first word. Jay Z got up. And that's what we should be applauding. That used our app, Floyd Manor has a song. Chat, I thought y'all, y'all, y'all give me a time stamp for the the uh, title part. I need the title part because that's what Nikki's tweets is about, the title part. Please. What the fuck? It's at 114.29. I really don't like when people who open up doors as black people mm-hmm. get shitted on publicly like that. I, I, I just don't like it. I think in that case, what Nikki did was wrong. Wait. To bring up title, oh, okay. well, we his started. streaming company, that he gave you equity in, that you, you know, didn't sign the fucking paperwork, and that's the reason why you left millions of dollars on the table. That man didn't do nothing to you to be talking about somebody who's putting whether it be Kendrick or Wayne. Okay. Perfect. So um, that's where we get from, um, you know, basically he said that Nicki Minaj is a little bit ungrateful because Jay had opportunities and and with the Tyler situation, which Nicki commented on before, saying that she got nothing out of. Apparently there was millions of dollars that she could have gotten. Anyway, let's go to Nicki Minaj's Twitter. One thing I do like about Nicki, and again, Please, y'all barbs, because sometimes y'all be starting, y'all start to dick ride me thinking I'm like a barb too. I'm not a barb. We're going to beef eventually, so please don't even start dick riding me, because I'm going to tell y'all Nikki trash in two ways, so please don't, okay? We're always at odds, um, and I don't do the the friend of my, what, the enemy of my enemies, my friendship. Fuck you niggas, okay? So fuck y'all barbs. So please, please just know that, all right? Because I see sometimes y'all be jacking me like, oh, look, I is right. No, fuck you niggas. I don't need no allies when I'm beefing. Anyway, okay. So, uh, 
this is what Nikki officially says. And, and I will give Nikki a little bit of credit. She don't delete tweets like me. If it said, fuck it. Let it be in the fucking history books. Nikki Minaj said, I received a call advising. So she's responding to what what, what um Steve South said by, by saying, I received the call advising that title was sold and they made no money on the deal. So all they could offer me was a million dollars. But wait, there's more. The lawyer advised me that Deseret, because now this is where Desiree Perez comes back in. Deseret is basically her calling Desiree Perez a rat. So she's saying Deseret, who's the CEO of Rock Nation, advised him, him being Jay-Z. The lawyer said that the CEO advised Jay-Z that I had to sign the agreement in 24 hours if I wanted the $1 million or the offer was off the table. He says, listen to the end of fractions for what my response was. Let's go to Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj fractions. Let's go to the lyrics to, to see what she was talking about. I didn't even look at this yet. Okay, she says, da, 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 da. wait. She says, listen to the end of that. Hmm. Oh, right here. Okay, good. Sex game still cold. It's on igloo. Head game still slicker. Like I miss Gorilla Glue. Heat trying to eat it up. I say, come and get it, boo. While I count a mill, jigger what? Jigger who? Okay, so it's, I guess that's a line that's kind of um, supposedly saying to Jay, like, bro, what the fuck is a million dollars, right? Okay, is there any other line? Okay, cool. It appears that that's the line. All right. Kind of goes towards, you know, not only proving, not that we kind of doubted that Nikki don't really write her rhymes, but yeah. Yeah, N Nikki basically said, I addressed this on us all, right? She then said, <clears throat> so Barb's, thank you for supporting something I was a part of. She's talking about title. I love you, but I was scammed, and I was offered a million dollars to be silenced. I declined. The grace of God is sufficient. I didn't need their hush money. Gag City, hold on, Gag City, Los Angeles, tomorrow, tonight and tomorrow, my documentary, okay. She then continued because someone posted a Shade Room post back when, you know, um, the title deal was made. And it says all 16 co-owners of title reportedly received $8.9 million payout following Jay-Z's recent deal. Beyonce, Kanye, Rihanna, Nikki. And more included, Nikki was also in the thumbnail, right? She said, LOL word, one of the blogs they reportedly have lots of control of. And I guess she's alluding that supposedly Rock Nation controls um, the shade room, which, by the way, shout to Angie. Fuck with Angie. I don't think that's true, but that's what she's alleging. She says, why is my photo there? Oh, reportedly, huh? LOL, y'all, I'm really laughing at how people who aren't really smart always believe they're outsmarting smart people. No, it's just that we know karma spins. It really spins. Nikki then continues to say, every day a new man pushing 60 years of age, getting fingered in the bussy. If you don't know what, it, what the bussy, I don't even need to explain it. Bussy, okay? Uh, fingered in the bussy. Then made to come on this internet and lie on me. God is in control. Bookmark this. I advise y'all never to mention my name again. Tonight and tomorrow, Gag City LA. Uh, he then, <clears throat> she then quote tweets uh, another account that says, y'all see how these people lie? Less than a week ago, Cameron and Mace told us that Jay-Z was lying about them not signing paperwork. Then yesterday, Jay-Z sent his mouthpiece, Steve Stout, to claim Nicki Minaj did not sign the paperwork. Come on, man. Okay? By the way, the first photo here says, Interesting, Nicki Minaj says she was not paid a penny from Tidal, unlike the other artists who made millions from it. Come to find out, it's because she never signed the paperwork after Jay-Z gave her equity. Then, people... It's crazy. <clears throat> Me and you were supposed to be a Fanatics. The, the week before so Fanatics happens... Oh, Cam and Mace didn't sign the contract. <laughs> we banned from Fanatics, but <laughs> who's in Fanatics? I'm going to start saying names. <laughs> Yo, it's wild, man. It's wild. <laughs> the hate man. is crazy. Yeah. 
It's crazy. <clears throat> Me and you was okay. So uh, Cameron Mason said that they were supposed to be a fanatic. So fanatics is owned by Michael Rubin, the white Diddy legend. And um, apparently Cameron Mason was supposed to be there, but guess who's the new white Diddy's partner? Allegedly, Jay Z. Jay Z may still have issues with Cameron Mace, and apparently, you know, um, they were not there. But supposedly, the reason that was given to everyone was that they didn't sign the contract. They're saying, "What? That's not the truth." So Nikki's kind of saying, "Don't that sound like my situation? I ain't get the million because I ain't signed a contract." Cool. Then Nikki says, uh, "They got to keep the conversation on memes, so no one asks about their charges against their BFF." Obviously, she's talking about Puff Daddy. Um, Jay Z, you know, last time Rock Nation brunch, and, and, and let's be clear, like, we, we don't got to be hot and shit. The last Rock Nation brunch, Diddy was full frontal at that motherfucker. Him and Jay Z were hanging like best buds, okay? Now, I don't know if they're friends, but that's just supposedly what it was, okay? Uh, we could probably, like, Right here. Bingo. Exactly. Jay-Z did. Okay? So I, she's talking about that. She's saying, yo, they want to talk about me instead of talking about the charges against her BFF, which is Diddy. I mean, it seems the 30-year-old T here is far from stale. Because she's talking about Diddy allegations, which supposedly spans 30 years. Patterns. Yet... SAS, Stephen A. Smith, Ugly Alien, which I believe, who's Ugly Alien? She mentioned who that was before. Who she said was Ugly Alien? Nikki be like giving code names for people. What did she call Ugly Alien? Anyway, I don't got time to like try to keep up with her code words. She says, Stephen A. Smith, Ugly Alien, Stout, which is Steve Stout, Dick Breath, Who's dick breath? What the fuck? Dick breath, etc. All talking about Onika. Why are they all talking about Onika? Then she says, the first time you catch me in a lie, delete my music. Okay. Then um, somebody says they all wanted, wanted, they wanted brunch and baby oil. Now, a lot of people point out like, yo, Nikki, you can't mention Diddy when your husband is actually on the sex offender registry. And that's a fact. Kenneth Petty um, is on the sexual, you know, registry. Um, <coughs> the Megan's Law requires him to be. She says you're worried about the T of a 15-year-old child, which, by the way, that's kind of, I ain't going to lie, it's kind of odd that she's, her husband now, who's probably approaching 50 with her, she says y'all worried about the T of a 15-year-old child. Obviously, supposedly, you know, her, her husband was, like young at that time. I don't know what the fuck. I don't know, bro. Worried about a T of a 15 year old child was railroaded, but no comments on the T <coughs> and baby oil that's been going on for decades. So she said, Yeah, I worried about my husband, but y'all don't care about Diddy. As recent as months ago, if 15 year old needs to be hold, uh, held accountable and told they can never move past their past, then what about a 30 year old who groom and groomed? Who groom and groom and sat by and was silent, etc. Oh right, let's talk. Let's keep the blogs focus on Anika, short and stout dick. Don't want to talk about him. Friend them, laughing my ass off. Basically saying, stop. Don't want to talk about Diddy. Okay. All right. Then she says, um, what she says. Undercover men are always aggravated with women because they have decided that they can't live in their truth. Therefore, women who have done nothing wrong to them are made to pay for simply existing. Fix it, Jesus. Enough is enough. Now, I do want to stop that and say, Nikki, this is where I got to call you out on your bullshit. Nikki Minaj, you will not be able to use the female I'm a victim privilege while being one of the biggest artists in the world and also being a bully when you want to. That's bullshit. I'm going to be honest with you. OK, the mere fact is that the Barb's are probably the most toxic fan base out of any rap fan bases um, that are being able to be weaponized. Um, when you then try to say, you know, oh, you, you, oh, P 
people are picking on you, it makes it seem like you're not trying to weaponize your fan base to pick on other people. Also, here's the thing, too. We're in 2024. Nikki, you know, <clears throat> I had, like, box seats to her, like, ticket, uh, her, her concert, like, in Madison Square. I, I, I gave it to my homies, like, girl. If you've ever been to a Nicki Minaj concert, half of the people there are gay. The LGBTQIA plus community really fucks with Nicki Minaj. There's nothing wrong with that, by the way, as well. But Nicki Minaj always seems to try to attack men who criticize her and call them undercover like she's trying to shame them. First of all, if you're an ally of that community, you tr if you're truly an ally, you wouldn't even try to out people who haven't outed themselves. So here's the thing. Nicki Minaj is a little bit of a fraud. When you call someone undercover, which, by the way, S Steve Stout or any other man, for the, like, we know the gay niggas. If you say Diddy gay, oh, okay, cool. Steve Stout not gay, bro. You get know what I'm saying? You trying to call men undercover is you trying to attack their masculinity that they have to be focused on defending that rather than talking about or criticizing you on the merit of your music. Now, here's the thing. I don't agree with anybody, uh, you know, e even myself. Like, you know, uh, again, if I'm making a music critique of, of Nicki, I don't care about Kenneth Petty and what he went through. Now, obviously, if, like, if it's some personal shit and she's attacking me personally, of course, I'll mention that. But other than that, yeah, like, you know, I don't think Nikki is being attacked unfairly if people are criticizing her on a industry-wide music level, right? So when she starts talking about undercover men, it's like you're using the thing that women use when they're trying to, you know, you know, shame men into not speaking about them, even if the men are speaking about them for legitimate reasons, which might be career critique. So I think that's a fraudulent thing by Nikki. Anyway, she then continues by saying, Dear Short, saying public figures like Jay Z has to catch a fade with your husband on the registry. <clears throat> Stupid. Barb's going to show to my front porch. No, they won't. I don't think none of these things will show to my front porch. Anyway. Damn, Nikki, I was just fucking with your point, man. Like, you just fucking, you fucked it up. Let me be clear. I'm going to stop reading Nikki's tweets. Nikki, and for you delusional barbs, send this message to her. You have a great point against Jay-Z. That's an amazing point. Stop using your sexual offender registry husband to try to further the point. You're one of the greatest female, no, artist, period. You're the greatest female rapper. You don't need to prove your point by saying you have a gangster husband that will kill him. You don't need to do that. Yes, Jay-Z been hating on you from what I, I, I've i seen. Jay-Z got ops. You're one of his ops. Drake, one of his ops. Um, Wayne ain't really one of his ops. And by the way, I think Wayne's situation with him really, like, they, they have a long history from, he was obviously trying to sign Wayne. He knew Wayne's situation with Birdman. He helped Wayne with taxes. It's different. But please, Nikki, just stop mentioning your guy, bro. Please, please, please. Anyway, let's go to Dame Dash. Dame Dash was trying to have. And by the way, chat, this is how organic shit is. I really thought, like, I was like, oh, my God, this is like, one of the only opportunities I'm going to be on the side of Nikki. And I completely was about to be on the side of Nikki till I really read it now. I'm like, wait, she's threatening to use her sex offender husband to, to beat people up for a fade. I thought Nikki was offering fade to the women. I'm like, oh shit, Nikki's about that life. Here we go. Anyway, Dame Dash spoke upon um, Steve Stout. Dame Dash spoke upon, upon Steve Stout, like, you know, doing an interview. And speaking negatively about him, he said uh, this. Why everybody wants to send certain people. There's certain people that always are defending certain people and talking about me. And I know that they're sent to do it. And Steve Stout's one of those, you know, will do anything anybody tells him for a dollar, hate his culture. And I just want to know who sent you, but you're making it obvious. And why you won't leave me the f 
cologne. You know what I mean? Yeah, Steve, stop saying that. I ran from him. That's the funniest shit in the world. In front of my girl. Mm -mm -mm. The lies in, on TV is like, you know I'm going to say something. Why would you do that? You know, again, I'm doing so bad. Um, drop a network, Steve Stout. Let's do that competition. Let's do the drop a cut. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I love Dame Dash. Nah, I ain't going to lie. Whoever drop a network behind Dame Dash is going to win because that nigga network suck. Sorry. That nigga shit suck. And I love when he's talking and shit. But Dame Dash, every time he's been sunned recently, like, Dame, I love you, bro. Like, you know, obviously, I, well, you can say whatever you want, but, dude, the Dame Dash I, I know. Who That's why he want to have a competition, because he trying to get that, uh, huh. He trying to get them followers and shit over there, I man. But that nigga shit trash over there. I don't know what the hell he got going on. Who is, I won't call it arrogant, but confident and, you know, just a, the, the, the epitome of businessmen, he's been getting sunned by other dudes who clearly are better businessmen. Like, for example, 50 Cent shitted on you, and your only response to him response to him was, yo, let's both drop a movie. Let's both drop a movie at the same time. 50 doesn't need you to market his shit. Like, 50 is lit. So 50 was just like, okay, weirdo. No. And, okay, fine. You and 50 are just not the same level. But, Dame, you were an exec. Steve Stout isn't like some superstar like 50 or had a music career. He was an exec as well. Y'all supposed to really be getting into it. And rather than having a response for him, you're like, let's both drop a movie? Feels like you want some type of competition and get some promo. Um, unfortunately, I, I just got to call a spade a spade. Drop a network competition. Let's do that. Or drop a network, whatever. Yeah, they put in, they put in, they gotta put some respect on my name. What's wrong with that? I don't know why everybody wants to send certain. Okay. Now, I, I do agree with him that probably Jay Z sending some people. Anyway, he also spoke about a um, supposedly a Diddy party that featured Aaliyah. And, and here's uh, Diddy, Aaliyah, Dame Dash. Here's an infamous picture. I don't know if you guys ever seen this picture before, but this picture showcases. Um, we got Diddy. I don't know who this. No, 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 Diddy. Hold, hold, sorry. We have Dame Dash. I don't know who this is. Is this Andre Harrell? It, it looks like it could be young Andre Harrell. Um, clearly Aaliyah, Diddy, and look look like J Lo. People were saying this looks like a Diddy party. This might have been a freak off. Again. Obviously, the reason why people think that it's, it looks like a bed in uh, in the background. You see Diddy and his significant other, but you see other people, uh, supposedly uh, Dame Dash, and also you know um, Aaliyah was dealing with each other. Is that Andre uh, Andre Harrell or no? Am I tripping? Yes, nigga. God yeah, damn. Right. Cool. And um, yeah. So, you know, he spoke on that because people were like, yo, Dame Dash, I thought you said you wasn't in for the fuckery. It looked like you was at a Diddy party that maybe a freak off happened. And he said this. That shit happened in the Hamptons. I, that's the day I met that, that, that me and Aaliyah, you know, we hung out there and then we left. And that's what happened. That was 20 years ago. That was not in L.A. or Miami. But I know they're going to play games with them pictures. It's all good. I don't really care. By the way, you know, as the focus seems to try to, people are trying to, like, figure out what Jay-Z was up to back then. Because everyone keeps saying, oh, Jay-Z's the next target. They're seeing pictures that have Jay-Z and Puff. Then, you know, you, you hear about Aaliyah, and then you hear about Foxy Brown. And then people start to wonder about the ages of these people uh, when Jay-Z was clearly over 18 or, you know, over even 21. What age were the women he was dealing with? Which that's a whole different thing, and then you get the Beyonce thing. That's a whole different thing too. I thought on on Diddy is it's sad. Period. It's just sad. 
and it's crazy and it's shocking you know well i should don't want me outside at all so uh yeah i mean i'm sure because i know i've been over here i've been over here and I, I never judge a man for any preference and all that and they keep it to themselves i ain't got nothing to do with none of that so none of that and you know I don't know anything about any of those things. From 2005 on, I wasn't around. You know, and that was the reason why I wasn't around. <laughs> so what I'm good, what, what's good is I don't know anything. I just know I wasn't there. And whatever happened is very it's a mystery to me, like it was a mystery to everybody else. But, you know, I know that my instincts told me to get the fuck out of certain environments. I'm not gonna say necessarily that one, but, you know, things that were along those lines. You know what I mean? That happened in the Hamptons. That's the Obviously, this is a byproduct of people wondering, yo, what about these associates? What about these pictures? People looking back at old pictures that feature, you know, Diddy in a party environment with other people. A lot of famous people back in the 90s and, you know, early 2000s, you would see Diddy in pictures with J-Lo, Jay-Z, Dame Dash, even Aaliyah. That's what he was kind of um, trying to explain, right? Um, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I'll be very shocked that that Dame Dash was into any of that fuckery. Reason being, I see how passionate Dame Dash talks about the abuse. I don't even think I have to say it like at this point. The abuse that Aaliyah went through, whether being underage and 